Hi friends, let's dive into the Hunger Games. The Hunger Games is a yearly event where two tributes from each district are reaped and enforced to fight to the death in an arena. One young man and woman to fight to the death in a pageant of honor, courage and sacrifice. There aren't really that many rules in these games. One of the big rules though is that children are not allowed to train in the districts before they are reaped. They are all given an equal opportunity to train once they're in the capital for a few days before the games begin. There are four compulsory exercises, the rest will be individual training. So training before the games would be seen as giving someone an unfair advantage, which is why there's a rule against it. However, districts 1, 2 and 4 do train their children throughout the year before the reaping, and this is a known fact. Actually, the districts and the tributes from these districts are known as career districts and career tributes respectively. He's a career. You know what that is? From district 1. And 2. They train in a special academy until they're 18. The use of the word career reflects the fact that the children put in a lot of time and energy all the time. Much like most people dedicate a lot of their time to improve their own career track for their job, that's what these children are doing for the Hunger Games. Districts 1, 2 and 4 are allowed to train even if it's illegal because they have a privileged relationship with the capital. In the movies, only districts 1 and 2 are the career districts as they are the closest to the capital. By closest, I don't mean geographically, I mean in their mindset. It's unsure exactly why these three districts specifically are the privileged ones. As I said, one and two are the closest to the capital in their mindset, but why is District 4 a part of the career group? But they are, and therefore they train the children until the children are 18 years old, at which point they volunteer for the games. They train in a special academy until they're 18, then they volunteer. By that point, Pretty lethal. So how do these training academies even work? How do they take innocent children and turn them into cold-blooded killers? No fighting with the other tributes. You'll have plenty of time for that in the arena. It's most likely that the training academies start training children when they are very young. My guess is you would be no older than 10 at the very latest before you join one of the academies. It's possible that at first the training academies only ask that children participate after school or on days off. But as you progress in the academy and you get older, you'd be allowed to take time away from school to train. This is especially true if you're one of the stronger trainees. Everyone would participate in the same basic training that would be both physical and theoretical. There are four compulsory exercises. The physical basic training would cover the basics, hence the name, like tying knots, climbing trees, or swimming. The theoretical classes, as I call them, would likely look more at the mental and psychological side of the Hunger Games. These classes would allow students to work on their charisma and stage presence. <laughs> But not only this, they would also focus on past Hunger Games. It's very likely that the children would be asked to watch previous Hunger Games, either as homework or classwork, and they would go over how the victor won. Real tech savvy. He won his games by electrocuting six tributes at once. They wouldn't just look at the victor though, they would likely look at all of the tributes and see every wrong and right decision that they made. This would give these children a huge understanding of how the games work and what you can do to give yourself more chances of winning. But by far the most important part of the theoretical classes would be brainwashing the children. Not only do you need to turn children into cold-blooded killers, you have to make them believe that this is the right and the correct thing to do. You're a fighter. I'm prepared, I'm vicious, I'm ready to go. Obviously they are already surrounded by the capital's propaganda, so this isn't that much work, but it is something they would need to be focused on. On top of basic training, the children would most likely be allowed to specialize in two or three disciplines, like archery or knife throwing or kind of whatever they want. There are four compulsory exercises, the rest will be individual training. They would then practice and work on these specialties, most likely under the guidance of a previous victor who was very talented in that area. This intense and focused training would make them very lethal killers once they had their weapon of choice in hand. This explains why once these children go to the capital and are in the training center, they are already experts in two or three different areas. Part of the training, especially once you get closer to graduating from this academy, would revolve around what you would show the game makers. Remember that each tribute gets a 15 minute session where they can show the game makers what they can do. Tomorrow they'll bring you in one by one, then evaluate you. 
This is important because higher ratings will mean sponsors. These sessions end with the game makers giving the tribute a score. Your score doesn't determine who will win. It's not because you had a good score that you're definitely going to win. It just gives the sponsors an idea of how talented these tributes are. Part of your training, therefore, would be to practice whatever it is you want to show the game makers. By working on your routine multiple times and being able to spot and fix any problems with it would give you the biggest chance of getting a good score from the game makers. And a good score means sponsors, and sponsors mean survival. Once the trainers, experts, and victors, and I guess whoever else is involved in the training academies feel that a student is ready to graduate, the student would have to pass a test. Part of this would be theory-based. Now, what I would assume the theory-based test would be, would be watching old Hunger Games clips and then being asked, what would you do in this situation? This would allow the people testing the children to see if they can think on their feet and if they can analyze the situation quickly and correctly. The child would also obviously need to pass a basic physical exam, where they'd have to prove that they can do anything they learn in basic training. Then, of course, there'd be the tests within the specialties that they've chosen to train in. Most importantly, and most gruesome, these academies need to train children to kill something else. Not just train them, they would need to test this. The theory of killing someone and actually killing someone are very different things. If a child's first kill is in the arena, we're not sure how they're going to react to that. They could be okay with what's happening, but more than likely it will shock them. And a shock tribute won't do well. This means that a huge part of their training will be practicing killing other things. This would most likely involve killing animals, as I'm not sure the district would want to kill their own children considering that's what the capital is doing already. Throughout the time of the training academies, the children would likely be asked every so often to kill a specific animal. Each time they were asked to do this, they would likely be watched to make sure they're doing it properly, as in without hesitation. This act of killing would obviously be a part of the final test. Having killed so many times before means that once they're in the arena, they'll no longer hesitate or think twice. I can still do that. <laughs> One more kill. It's the only thing I know how to do. Once a child has graduated from the academy, they would be allowed to volunteer at the next reaping. This normally means that the volunteers from the career districts are about 18 years old, as this gives them the most time to train and prepare. They train in a special academy until they're 18, then they volunteer. But we know from some tributes, like Clove, who is 15, that some of these kids do volunteer before they're 18. This could be that they were extremely talented and graduated early. It could also be that they're extremely arrogant and decide to volunteer before they're allowed to. Yes, he won his games at 14, youngest ever, extremely humble. You're kidding. Yes, I'm kidding. He's a peacock, a total preener. The thing with volunteering is you can't stop someone from doing it. If they call his name, I'll volunteer in his place. Hey, Mitch, thank you. But they call my name and Peter volunteers. There's nothing I can do. And because training is technically illegal, it's not like the training experts can say to them, no, you're not allowed to volunteer. Please sit down and let someone else volunteer. Yes, it's illegal. And yes, everybody knows they're doing it anyway, but you still don't really want to rub it into the capital's face. So if someone who hasn't graduated does decide to volunteer, no one can really tell them not to. This explains why some career tributes are under the age of 18 or maybe not that talented when they volunteer. They weren't supposed to, but they did it anyway. What type of training do you think these tributes get before they volunteer? Please tell me in the comment section down below. And until next time, happy bubbles! Thanks so much for watching this video and thank you to my Patreon bubblers for supporting the channel. If you want to see any of my other Hunger Games videos, you can click on the box on the left to find out my explanation about the careers, or you can click on the box on the right to find out my explanation about how volunteering actually works. Thanks for liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that notification bell.